Welcome to the Walking Off Podcast brought to you by Blue Wire Hustle. I am Francisco, joined by Todd Varney and Wendy Hansen. Um, how are you two doing today? Really good. Yeah. Yeah, really good. How's it uh, going, Todd? As long as Brewers hold on to this lead, man, I'm doing fantastic. What is that, nine in a row if they win? Yes, sir. That's and amazing. Nine, or I think that's like 11 out of their last 12. Yeah. Yeah, they've been hot. Yeah, baseball is uh, hot in Milwaukee, the city, according to ESPN. That is not the most attractive, but they can, you know, prove them wrong with that. Yeah, which is funny because they were excited to go to Cleveland every year. It was LeBron. Like nobody, was, <laughs> yeah. nobody was bashing Cleveland. You're like, oh, but Milwaukee's mm-hmm. just a terrible city. Got it? Okay, thanks. I don't know when I when I plan vacations, I usually try to go to Cleveland. It's like that's like the ideal destination for a you know. Family yeah, vacation, right? right. Uh-huh. Oh, you know, beautiful and everything. And not the bash, <laughs> not not to, not the bash Cleveland, but I, I'm I, sure I, it's I, lovely. I have no issues with Cleveland. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. But I get your, I get your you point. Think, you get think Milwaukee's terrible, but you were excited for Cleveland. That doesn't mesh. Yeah, no, not at not at all, not at all. Um, if you guys have not subscribed to this podcast yet, uh, please press that subscribe button on wherever you find your podcast or YouTube. You can check us out also on Facebook, our Twitter page. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, looking around the league and around uh, the Brewers uh, world here, let's take a quick look around the diamond. Wendy, what do you got for us? Yeah, so a lot of things happening in Brewers world. I'll kind of give you a shortened elevator pitch. Uh, Aaron Ashby, he played for the crew on Friday. Uh, he went, or no, I'm sorry, Sunday. Um, he started the game. He went two thirds innings. Unfortunately, he didn't have the best start. Uh, he gave up four hits, three walks and seven runs. Uh, you know, all in all, um, he, he didn't play terrible. (laughs) I mean, the, The circumstances could have been a little bit better, um, but for his first major league start, great to see him out there. Uh, The defense didn't help him out. Um, Three of those were unearned runs, so um, it wasn't all on him. Um, Unfortunately, he was optioned back down to AAA today, um, which short stint, um, I'm sure we'll see him back up. Uh, I think he's one of those players that's going to be a long-term talent for the for the Brewers. So looking forward to seeing more from him. Uh, right-handed pitcher Alec Bettinger was recalled from Nashville uh, as well today. Um, so another uh, another change that the Brewers are making. It seems like they've been making a lot of those lately. Uh, it's kind of seems to be Council's thing, um, which. More often than not, works in our favor. Um, so you know, putting putting trust in him. Um, I did want to share a few fun Brewer facts that came out of the series, which Todd is going to talk about uh, a little later against the Cubs. Uh, but just some things that I found to be uh, a bit of a mood booster <laughs> um, coming off of that already high that we had. Um, after that three game series, uh, the first one, according to stats, Inc Wednesday's game was the first in the modern era of baseball, which was, uh, since 1901 to have both teams lead by at least seven runs by the fourth inning. Uh, I don't know (laughs) about you guys, but when I was watching that game, my mind was just blown. I was like, is this like, what am I watching right now? (laughs) This is bonkers. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, the Brewers were down seven in the first. Uh, they weren't even able to get up to bat before they were trailing uh, by a full touchdown. Um, but of course, they came back to win 15 to seven. So it worked in our favor. Uh, the second thing, they swept the Cubs uh, for the first time since September of 2017 at Wrigley Field. And it was the first time that we swept them in Milwaukee since April of 2013. So it has been a hot minute, um, which made that sweep all the more satisfying. Um, And then lastly, uh, as we talked about earlier, the Brewers are on an eight game regular season winning streak. 
Uh, this is the first time that they've done that since the end of 2018 when they beat the Cubs at Wrigley in game 163 to claim the division crown. Uh, I'm not saying, <laughs> but I'm just saying uh, maybe good things are, are to come of that. So uh, some exciting things uh, are happening with this team. Um, another thing that I quickly wanted to add, uh, Brewers number four prospect, Ethan Small is pitching. Um, he's representing the Brewers in a futures game. Uh, Ethan Small has an ERA of 1.98 uh, between double and triple A. Uh, and he's given up one earned run or fewer in the six of his past seven starts. So another pitcher to keep our eye on. Um, again, this pitching crew on our team this season is stacked. And I think if we continue to bring up these players, in you know the way that we have been we're gonna have talent for years to come uh so i'm i'm really excited about that yeah uh the pitching rotation um is going to be good for several years we still have obviously woodruff and burns on team control as well as peralta because he has a very uh team friendly contract <clears throat> so right. yeah i mean i think we can probably I, i'm assuming they'd probably call him up in, in september I don't, I don't see him being called out before that, but you know, it's good to have him represent the Brewers in the uh, the futures game. Um, hopefully, he does well. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, exciting think, to see all the young talent. The I'm going to step in with the one Debbie Downer of the week, uh, like I have to do. Yep. Uh, Bobby Wall was designated for assignment this week, mm -hmm. um, which I. I had really high hopes for him. Uh, we got him from the Mets with Aaron Hill in the Keon Broxton trade. And I loved Keon. And I really was hoping that like we were going to get something that stuck out of that deal uh, for letting a guy like Keon go. And unfortunately, Bobby, he had some injuries. Um, I think he tore his ACL like when he came over in spring training that year. Um, and just had injury issues and could never really find his stuff with the Brewers. So unfortunately... He's gone. He was claimed by the Dodgers um, as kind of a reclamation there, see if they can get something out of him. But unfortunately, Bobby Wall is no longer with the organization. Yeah, he was an original draft pick by uh, by Oakland. I think yeah. he was a fifth-round pick or a sixth-round pick. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he was a high draft pick uh, several years ago. I think they traded him to the Mets for... Fifth uh, round in 2013. Okay. Uh, he was traded... For the Mets. Familia, yep. Yeah. So, yes, indeed. Uh, he's he. I think he's been injured almost every every season since then. Like he hasn't made very. If you look at his MLB or baseball reference or anything, he hasn't pitched very many innings. Um, so the Dodgers, you know, they're buying low on a, a prospect or the potential of having, um, you know, a decent reliever. They. I feel like if the Dodgers have any issue this season, it's been their bullpen. So yeah. they're just, you know, making that that early move to try to get somebody and take a flyer on some similar to what the, the Brewers did with um Hunter Strickland and all the you know pieces they've been kind of taken up here and there. So um it is it is kind of like you said, like we wish we could have had something from that trade that kind of sticks. And that's those are the trades that really bug you when you know nothing works out, maybe none of the players you get end up, you know, panning out, which is one of the big reasons why I am okay with trading prospects for proven players. And I hope the Brewers do do that this year because you never know what they're going to be. Like we have the Aaron Ashby's and the, the uh, Ethan Smalls of the world coming up and pitching for us eventually, but we don't know if they're going to pan out. Right. So um, their, their potential is what is worth more right now than what we have, you know, what they can do for us. So, you know, maybe they stick it with us and we, you know, we can obviously use them. But if we can use those pieces like that to trade for a proven bat, because, you know, we have a window right now. And I feel like you can never really be too scared of making moves. And like, that's what I love about this team. Like they make moves and sometimes they bite them. Right. But, uh, you know, they're always that doesn't stop them from making more moves. So. I think that's cool. I uh, I guess we'll see what kind of happens, you know, in the next couple of weeks heading into the uh, All Star break, as well as the the trade deadline, which is coming faster than I uh, I thought. It yeah, it's right around the corner. Um. So this 
won't be breaking news to anybody by the time they listen to it. Corbin Burns just left the game with an uh, an injury in the eighth inning. Couldn't see what it was, but he did not look happy. Um, doesn't look like he's limping or anything. So, not sure what happened there. Hopefully, it's nothing major. Um, oh God! But we'll we'll stay tuned to see how that is. Yeah, I'm trying to look right now on uh, see if I see any breaking news or anything. But um, um, yeah, Adam McCalvey trainers. just yeah Adam McCalvey just tweeted that the athletic trainer is out to visit Corbin Burns, um, and he is coming out in the eighth inning. So, um, you know, just kind of keep your, you know, send him good thoughts and well wishes and hopefully nothing, nothing major and hopefully just precautionary mm -hmm. uh, because that's, yeah. that's the last thing the Brewers need right now is to lose a starting pitcher, especially one of his caliber. I think they could for a small time kind of withstand that, but I don't, I don't want to risk that at all right now. So. Right. Yeah. Definitely not. Good thoughts his way for sure. But, uh, like you said, we, the Brewers are winning. We, you know, we've been streaking. Um, we had a good series against the Cubs. Um, and Todd, why don't we go ahead and just kind of review that real quick? Kind of give us a breakdown of uh, that those past games, and we can kind of talk about what stands out to to us when when you're done. Yeah, definitely. Uh, looking at Monday night's game, uh, the Brewers won fourteen to four. And it was really good to see. I, I think I sent you both a message that it felt like a win that the Brewers could really build off of. Mm -hmm. um, they were up four to two going into the seventh. The Cubs scored a couple of there, a um, couple of runs there to tie it up. And then in the eighth inning, they had bases loaded. Devin Williams just didn't have his stuff, and they managed to get out of it. And it really felt like the momentum was going the Cubs' way at that point. Uh, and then the Brewers put up a 10 spot in the bottom of the eighth to put them away. Uh, and send the Cubs fans home early. So that was nice. Uh, Abby Garcia had a home run in that game. His 15th of the year, Adamas, also hit one in the eighth inning, uh, as did Keston Hira. So good to see those guys uh, getting in there. Uh, Keston, obviously, you know, starting to look better, making better contact, cutting down, not chasing some of those terrible pitches. Is that bat still leave a little bit to be desired? But good to see it there. Uh, runners in scoring position, eight for 13. So fantastic there. Uh, finally, <laughs> Freddie Peralta went uh, six innings, gave up two runs and had eight strikeouts. Uh, Boxberger came in, uh, gave up the two runs, and then Devin Williams ended up with the win. And uh, it was Miguel Sanchez that came in and, and shut the door then at the end. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a fun one there. Weird to see Peralta spotting a team two runs. I feel like the last couple of weeks, our starting pitchers are, are loving giving up first inning runs and then just waiting on the offense to figure it out. Uh, jumping over to Tuesday night, a completely different ball game. The offense decided to just go quiet. Uh, two hits, two runs, but those two runs were enough. They they beat the Cubs 2-1 to one, uh, in that one. So Jace Peterson had an RBI, as did Yelich. Um, Peterson's been on a tear lately, which is fantastic. Just one of those guys getting on base a ton and has a, a small window of opportunity right now, and he, he's really taking advantage of it. His last seven games, his average is 529, and he's got seven walks. Um, eight runs scored and six RBIs. Like <laughs> On base chase. <laughs> yeah, we 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 every we all knew that you know Jace was going to be the guy that that held this team together through a win streak this year. Um, we all had that on our bingo cards, I'm sure. So, <laughs> yeah, good to see him out there. Uh, Woody uh, came out through six strong innings, gave up one earned run, had eight strikeouts. Good to see that. Suter, Cousins, Boxberger, and Hader all came in and uh, shut the Cubs down. So nice to see the bullpen come in and do that which then they also did yesterday, um, Wednesday, against the Cubs after Ashby went two-thirds of an inning, gave up uh, four earned runs, seven runs total. Did not look good at all. Uh, but then Sanchez uh, threw two and a third. Richards came in and threw two innings. Strickland threw two innings. Cousins and Suter threw an inning each, uh, none of them giving up any runs, which was fantastic. 
uh, to see there as the Brewers came back from that 7-0 deficit that Wendy was talking about before to win 15-7. to uh, Urias hit a couple of bombs. Adamas hit the, the Brewers' first Grand Slam of the year, which was nice to be on the other side of a Grand Slam for once. I feel like this team's yeah. given up so many this year. I think it's like five or six. Uh, so to be on the other side of that is is definitely nice. Um, RBI, Adamas had the four. Jackie Bradley Jr. had had one. Uh, Jace Peterson had three, and, and Urias had four. So nice to see those guys um, getting it going. Just a couple of guys to touch on here, too. Keston Hira, um, like I mentioned, his last seven games, definitely a, a completely different guy at the plate, hitting 333 with three home runs, 11 RBIs. Uh, still has nine strikeouts in 24 at bats, but Keston's going to strike out that, you know, 30 ish percent of the time. So at least when he's not striking out, he's finally making decent contact um, and looks to have something going there. And I think one other person to talk about is Jackie Bradley Jr. over his last seven games. Uh, average up to 300 in those during that stretch, uh, four RBIs, a couple of walks. So good to see him starting to hopefully build something um, because he's he was looking awfully bad for a while. I mean, to be batting you know, 300 over your last seven games, he's still at 167. So... <laughs> Uh, tough to see that, but I think he's starting to get in that groove. You know, uh, Lorenzo Cain's been out for a while, so he's been getting those consistent at bats, um, and and that's what, a lot of times what these guys need, especially somebody like Jackie Bradley, who was playing. You know, he was the everyday guy in Boston, and they need that routine to kind of build off. And I think that that that's what we're seeing here um, is is a product of him being able to be in that routine and be comfortable. So hopefully. Um, he can build some confidence and be able to move around again when Locaine comes back. I feel like they have been able to score late in games lately, which is amazing to see. Um, and I feel like they kind of have that attitude of, you know, they don't quit. They don't really give up. I think earlier in the season, we kind of saw several games. I think the Reds, the Reds series kind of comes to my mind when they were down all of those games. And each of those games, they kind of made a push but they never really got that last run or that big hit with runners and scoring position to kind of push them over the edge to get that win. I feel like lately um, they've had that. And I, I liked, I like what I see from this team offensively because I feel like they kind of have that mentality of they don't give up and they feel like they can win. Um, and they, I feel like they really believe that, and they don't just, you know, they're not just saying that. It's like they actually believe that no matter what, how down they are, they can actually come back and win. And if you look at these these games, they, you know, um, Monday's game, it was 4-4, you know, heading into the eighth inning. And then what do we do? Uh, we scored, I think, what, 10 runs in the last three innings. So things like that are really cool to see. Um, even the, the comeback win against the Rockies where they were able to come back from behind. They had, I think, what, three straight innings. Uh, with a home run and then the sacrifice from Kesson Hero. So I feel like this team has been showing a lot of fight lately. And to me, I feel like the biggest reason is, you know, obviously has been Willie Adamas and what he's done. Um, if you think about um, him and, he, you know, we got him from Milwaukee and all he did there was win. Um, Tampa. Was, sorry, Tampa Bay, yes. Um, and all he did there was win 90 games his rookie season. Um, they lost. They didn't make the playoffs because of, you know, which I kind of hate when you see teams like that in all sports when there's a team that has 90 wins, they don't make it, but a team with like 83 or 84 somehow manages to win their division and gets in. Either way, they didn't make the playoffs. The next year, they got the wild card. They get to the ALDS. They lose to the Astros. The very next year, 2020, they're in the World Series. So all he's known has been success since he's, you know, been called up to the big leagues. And then he gets traded over to the Brewers. And the Brewers, I want to say, I have it here, trying to pull it up real quick, what what their record was before him. So they were 21-23 and 23 and third in the Central, four games back of first place. So now what we have a six-game lead, seven-game lead, or whatever it is, depending on how the Cubs, if the Cubs win or lose. And we have been one of the better teams record-wise in all of baseball. And if you look at his um, – I can't – I don't have his stats in front of me, but, but he's been – hitting home runs, he's been on base, 
And he's been really clutch in the late innings, which kind of gets back to my point of this team really believes that they're never really out of it. And I feel like that attitude can really, really propel this team forward. And it has been. Well, and I think, too, part of the reason, in addition to that winning mentality, I think Willie Adamas has played a huge part in just bringing the fun back mm-hmm. into this team. You know, his presence has been such a mood lightener. Um, and I think where the Brewers really struggled at the beginning of the season was just getting in their own heads and that like mental space um, that was just difficult to get out of when you're losing games and you're not hitting. Um, but to have someone like Adamas who, you know, he's just a presence is all I can say. Um, it's it's just fun to see these guys out there, you know, jiving and gelling and just having fun. And, you know, it reminds me back to like 2018 and and that group of guys who were winning ball games and you could tell that they were just playing for the love of the game. Um, so really good to see that as well. Yeah. Since he came over to Milwaukee, he's batting 279. OPS of 874. Uh, he has seven home runs, 28 RBIs. Uh, so definitely has been a spark on that on that offense. Um, and I, I think we've seen a lot of guys benefit from that. And, you know, I mean, I don't think it's a, a fluke that Luis Urias is playing the way he is next to him every day. Um, so, you know, that that's a big move there. Um, and then uh, going back to the Corbin Burns situation that we're looking at, Adam McKelvey uh, tweeted, the lip reader in me thinks he saw Burns say, I'm fine, to Craig Council and the athletic trainers, uh, Scott Berenger and Dave Yeager, and get a pat on the shoulder from Council, but we'll see what the word is from the clubhouse. So That's definitely encouraging. I mean, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad um, Burns seems to be doing fine. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. Just, um, again, you know, send good prayers, thoughts up to him, prayers, however you, whatever you believe. Um, and just hopefully everything is well with this team because uh, we can definitely use him. But let's go ahead and jump into uh, the triple play here. Three topics and we'll uh, each have a topic this, uh, this episode. Wendy, I'll let you go first. What do you got for us? Yeah. So I'm going a little off topic. And I am going to talk about 4th of July traditions with the holiday coming up on Sunday already. I cannot believe that it's the 4th of July already. Um, But I wanted to get uh, your take on, or I guess hear from you guys on what your favorite uh, 4th of July traditions were. Uh, For me growing up, so my family has a cabin uh, up north Wisconsin. And every year we would spend the long weekend up there. And um, at night on the 4th of July, we do the whole like cookout and cornhole and boating um, lake day during the day. And then at night, um, everybody would get in their pontoon boats, go into the middle of the lake, and then they would set off fireworks and you would get to watch them from the party barge. So I did that for, gosh, probably the first I would say like 10 years <laughs> or for, for, you know, 10 ish years. And it was amazing. I haven't done it in a while, sadly, but hopefully next year I'll get back up there. Yeah. That sounds like a blast. Um, I don't know. We've always just like found fireworks somewhere in the area. Um, I haven't really done anything wild for 4th of July since I quit drinking a few years ago. So like everything before that was like, where's the party? Let's get wild and have a good time. Now. I mean, when you, once you've seen some fireworks, you've kind of seen them. Uh, and I, and I try to avoid crowds and I get grumpy once the sun goes down. So, uh, I'm, I'm usually trying to find a place to go to sleep by then. Um, but <laughs> otherwise I, I will say one really cool, um, thing a 4th of July, when I was in North Dakota, the only nice thing I can probably say about that state is I was living in Williston, North Dakota, and my place was up on a hill that overlooked the town. And the town had fireworks that were being set off to the east. And like everybody in that town, because it, it's oil workers, it's a bunch of rednecks that have way too much money um, and nothing to do with it for the most part. 
So they would spend like five to 10 grand on their own fireworks in their yard. And so it would be like almost a 360 degrees of just fireworks. going. I just park my truck up on the hill and watch fireworks. It was fantastic. That's awesome. But it's also one of those videos that nobody else will ever watch. Nor <laughs> I don't know that I've watched them, but I remember being like, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to love to show that. No, no, no. <laughs> I was just taking up space on my phone. Yeah, I'm not a big take picture of the fireworks kind of guy because, I mean, who, when am I ever going to go back on my phone and just be like, wow, those, those fireworks are pretty legit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, just, I don't understand. That was the best show of my life, and I've never looked back at them. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're a unless you're a photographer, like my sister is a photographer. So for every um, fourth, we would go to. So my dad worked at a hotel in uh, right near San Francisco. So it was like right before the bridge. So we would he would always let us to the top floor. Um, so we would watch from the top floor of the hotel, kind of like a little uh, like party, like uh, dining area with a big old window. So we would just sit there, see all the fireworks go off in San Francisco, and then we would walk down. Uh, walk a couple blocks to where the fireworks would go off in our city in the Oakland area. So we would get two different fireworks shows um, and then we would go back to the hotel and he would always soak us up like coffee and like our hot chocolate when we were younger and uh, chips or whatever that they would have in like their waiting room and lobby and stuff. So yeah, that's pre pretty much what we did. Like I'm not a big fireworks guy. Like I never really have been. So like we would mostly go for my sisters. Like I said, like I said, my sister takes pictures and stuff. So yeah, other than that, like, I never really got super into 4th of July. Like, we never, you know, we I didn't have a boat like Wendy, so I couldn't, get, <laughs> you know. Not everybody can live that lifestyle that, that Wendy yeah. had. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know. I will say watching a really good fireworks display, though, usually gets me in my feelings a little bit, and I end up, like, texting my buddy, is that served? And, like, dude, thank you. Incredible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. because you went and let your life suck for a handful of years. I get to lay in this grass drunk and watch <laughs> like awesome. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, for the topic that I kind of wanted to talk about, um, I, I was kind of looking at the, some stats in, uh, cause we're kind of, we're kind of lucky with the bullpen that we have. And I feel like, somebody we don't talk about enough is our closer and Josh Hader. Um, we've been, and then he gets a lot of the credit, but I feel like sometimes he's almost overlooked because we think about the Burns, Woodruff, Peralta, um, our, uh, Willie Adamas, but we never, I feel like, especially in this podcast, I feel like we haven't really talked about him enough and he deserves a ton of credit because what he's been doing this season, I think, He's 19 for 19 or 20 for 20 in saves. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, uh, 20 for 20. 20 for 20. And I think he's third in in, uh, in closers for in saves. And just looking at the the saves leader, I, I want to say it's Mark Melanson from um, the Braves. No, not the Braves anymore. He's on the Padres. And then I can't remember who's second, but uh, I'm pulling it up right now. I had it up. It's kind of going to bug me, but uh, he is, he's third in saves. And I feel like he's been lights out. Like every time he goes up there, I feel like I have confidence that he's going to get the save. Um, I feel like he's really adapted to this only one inning kind of role that he's been put in. Cause before the season he would go multiple innings and I feel like he still can. And I think once we get closer to the playoffs and if we're making that push, I don't think we would, I don't think, it's, you know, it'd be strange to see him do an inning or two, especially in the playoffs. But I like that he's getting, you know, he's getting rested. He's not being overused. But he still has an amazing ERA. He has perfect in saves. And I feel like he's really solidified the back end of this bullpen for us. So what's really funny is as we're talking about that right now. Did you just pull um, the save? Le no, Liam Hendricks has, uh, he's in second place with the White Sox for saves at 21. <laughs> Melanson with the Padres has 25 and then haters tied uh, with Kenley Jansen, K That's Craig Kimbrell yeah. and Alex Reyes uh, at 20. No, but it was funny as you were saying that because uh, the Brewers were up four to one going into the top of the ninth here. And 
Hader was getting up in the bullpen and you have full confidence that they're, he's going to come in and shut the door, which is great. They scored a run, had runners on second and third with one out. And the one thing I think that affects Hader's not leading the, the saves as, as he could be is the fact that there's been a lack of opportunities uh, for him. And he was standing there and they got another pitcher up and started warming up. I didn't see who it was, but the whole time you were talking about him, he was just, they were showing the one pitcher and he was just standing there like head down looking at the baseball, like, Oh man, I was going to get to play today, <laughs> but now I don't. And they did get both of those runs in. Uh, so it is now seven to one in the top of the ninth. Ooh. Yeah. And like I said, the, the Brewers and their ability to add on runs late has been just fantastic. And I, I feel it. like, yeah, I feel like we haven't seen that from this team ever. Like they were having so many issues just trying to score one run. And we thought kind of in that losing streak that we were on, if they, if they go down one run, like are we even able to score a run like all game? And sometimes it was like, well, we scored a one run, but I feel like lately they're scoring and they're scoring in bunches. And it's not just a home run. Like they're scoring with some small ball, with singles, ball. with doubles, yeah. with bunting, bunting. For teams that are really home run dependent, once you get to the playoffs, like if you can't figure out how to hit against, you know, the Max Scherzers, and like you're not going to be able to just launch home runs off these guys. So you got to be able to learn how to play small ball. And I feel like they're really finding so many different ways to score. And that's so encouraging to see. Um, and the reason why I actually this topic kind of came up is because last night, I don't know if you saw the game with um, the Angels and the Yankees. The Yankees were up, I think, eight to four, maybe. Mm -hmm. And their closer came in, gave up a grand slam. He was taken out, and then they scored two more runs. So I think the Angels scored maybe seven or eight runs in the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what got me thinking like, wow, I wonder, you know, how our closer is. And then I look at him, I'm like, this guy hasn't given up a blown a save yet. So, you know, knock on wood that we don't have to do be in that position. But it's just so cool to see that we have somebody in our in our boat in our bullpen who can lock it down with the confidence that, that we have in him. So I love that. Yeah. The the cool thing too, in their last nine games, including tonight, they're averaging uh over seven runs a game, which is like you said earlier in the season. I was turning off games that were three to one in the seventh inning because I was like, we're never going to score a run. Yeah. I got other things to do. Um, but to see them on a day like Tuesday where they only had two hits, the offense disappeared, um, and they were st still able to eke out that win really says something. And and the way the bullpen's been lately too, you know, when, when Fire Eisen and Rasmussen got traded, I think a lot of us were like, okay, now what? Uh, Miguel Sanchez has been great. Trevor Richards, we've talked about him, friend of show, fantastic. Hunter Strickland, Jake Cousins, suitors really seem to find his stuff again. Um, in that Cubs series, I believe the run differential for the bullpens, the Cubs bullpen gave up 19 runs in those three games. The Brewers gave up two. <sighs> Holy crap. <laughs> and, it was, and it was the first reliever that came in. It was Brad Boxberger on Monday night. So after he left the game, no reliever gave up a run. That's incredible. So yeah, that, that bullpen, as much as the offense has been killing it lately, the bullpen's been lights out too. Yeah. Not many teams can say they have a lights out closer. I mean, I feel like there's several really good closers, you know, Liam Hendricks is one, obviously Mark Blanson is doing it. Um, I don't know why the Braves didn't sign him. They could definitely use him this season, but yeah, I mean, we have a we have a really good one. So, and I feel like this yes, is the first do. trade deadline in a while that we haven't talked about. Are we trading him? Are we not trading him? I haven't really right. heard those rumors, which is also very encouraging. Which means we're yeah. trading him. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you, you heard, heard it here David, first. <laughs> David Stearns always makes the moves you're not hearing about. Hater, it's been wonderful. Uh, best of luck, whatever American League team you get traded to. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, shut your mouth. Uh, no. What about how 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 do you feel about your Yankees? Uh, you know, they'll they'll, they'll bounce back. Not Really? I don't know how they're this bad. I don't know. They're, how. they're bad. 
they're bad. Yeah. Like they're mm -hmm. <laughs> they're really bad. Yeah, but, it's not so, good. Not good. Yeah. Oh well. Looking ahead, looking ahead. Let's look to this uh this next series here. We have, I guess, this current series that we're in. Um, we have. Do we, is it over? Have you won? It is just, not over yet. Are we still scoring? Pirates fans have their rally caps on. Mm. <laughs> um, but it is uh, what are we looking at? Seven to one here in the Seven bottom one. of the ninth. Who's with Alec, Alec Ettinger coming on. So uh, hey, I'm going to say seven up. to three will be the final. I, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. I will say this. Um, like you said, our bullpen has been so well. They're doing pitching so well. Our bullpen has been. Like, I mean, I, I still think we need to add at least one more bullpen arm. But it's this whole team, like all facets of the game. Like we've been hitting well. We've been pitching well. The bullpen is good. Our defense has been solid. There, I have. I don't feel like we really have. Um, if we can keep playing like we are doing right now, I don't really feel like this team has a, a weakness. I feel like this this team is pretty, pretty well, you know, throughout the lineup. And there's some teams I feel like if you look at like the Angels, right? They have like two or three really, really. Uh, big name players, but they, they're they still under 500 or whatever, and they're not going to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I feel like this team is kind of made up of all the parts, and everyone kind of has a role, mm -hmm. and like, everyone kind of knows what they're supposed to do. Like We don't have – we have, obviously, an Iranian MVP, um, and, and Willie Adamas is like, – if I feel like he was with us from the beginning, he'd probably be an all-star. But, I mean, other than that, like, you know, we don't have – these big household names, which is obviously reflected in kind of how we don't really have any ulcers. But I just feel like the sum of the parts just makes this wonderful piece that is this Brewers team. And that's so cool to see because I don't right now the way they're playing, if they can keep this up, there's not there's no weakness in this team. The, the bullpen's good. So yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I mean if, go ahead, Wendy. Oh, I was I was just gonna say that in the beginning of the season it seemed like it was very janky. Like there were, you know, like Francisco, you were saying there were pieces that were playing well. They just weren't gelling together and creating that cohesiveness. Um, and now it's, it seems like it's a well oiled machine and yeah, absolutely. If they can continue playing like they are right now, <sighs> October, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the last week, our worst offensive players, probably Christian Yelich. Uh, yeah. hitting 192. Yeah, 192. On base percentage is 382, so it, he is getting his walks there. Um, still striking out quite a bit, but you know, for for Christian, it'll it'll come around. It, it's going to be there eventually. Um, and I think that having guys like Keston Hira starting to hit the ball, uh, Narvaez is staying hot. RC is coming around. You know, you look at this lineup once. Uh, Colton Wong comes back and, and Lorenzo Kane's in there. Um, you know, him and Jackie Bradley Jr., they're probably switching off in the eighth spot. So then you're looking at Colton Wong leading off Willie Adamas to Christian Yelich to Garcia or Hira. Narvai is in there. Urias. Um, you know, it's, it, it can go pretty deep with these guys because you're still going to have, you know, a, a Travis Shaw coming back at the end of the year uh, who mm -hmm. will be you know, an all right left-handed bat off the bench. He's going to get put in there in those situations for him to succeed against righties. So it'll, it'll be interesting to, to see these guys, you know, if they can keep rolling like they have been. Can we talk real quick before we look into the next series about Kessin no, here? I don't want to talk. <laughs> let's, let's, let's real quick. Let, let's talk about Kessin here. I want to give him a little yeah. bit of love here because, um, and we'll, we'll jump into just real quick, but, we had talked, uh, Wendy and I, last week uh, when he was, you know, called up. But we, we had, I was kind of noting that when you get called down, sent down, and called up, and sent down, and called up, it can kind of mess with your the mental side of, of things. Um, and you never know how it would affect him to say if he didn't perform and if he wasn't playing well. If he gets sent down again, how would you know? How will he respond to that? He has proof shown us that. He, I don't know if it's going to stick, but so far, like he has looked like a completely different player. Um, I would say, like, he, he strikes out still, but some of his at bats have been more competitive, I guess. He's yep. not just swinging, like, there are some pitches that, like, I thought, oh, okay, he's gonna swing, 
get in swing. You know, he's been taking a couple more walks now. And I feel like he, you know, he's his at bats just seem to be so much different than when he had first came up. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, he's he's playing really well in his last um, seven games. Average is 320, uh, three home runs, 11 RBI. So he is doing slugging 720. So like, if he can, yeah, keep his, this his up, OPS is at 1120. Like, okay, <laughs> all right, fantastic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just stay so, there, Keston. It's not that hard. He said it when he came in to the when he first got drafted. Hitting's easy, Keston. <laughs> it's easy. what you're doing is easy, man. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, if he can just keep that up, it's it's so good to see um, because he's been doing well. All our you know. Jace Peterson on base machine. God. It's just, it's, it's great to see. So good for Kasten. I'm glad that he's hitting well. Hopefully he can keep that up. Batting 320, OP, uh, on base percentage 400, slugging 720. High, you know, it's been great. So um, even if he regresses a little bit, just having his at bat back in the lineup completely changes this team's dynamic. So Really cool, really cool to see. Uh, moving on though, just another one of those Jackie Bradley stat lines though. Where the last four games, uh, he's hitting three twenty, still on the season. He's at one sixty three. <laughs> like that's how yeah. bad it was before. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so next, so next, uh, next series, next game, we have Hauser versus I don't even know how to pronounce this last name. Brew Baker, Bru Baker, Bru Baker, Bruh. Bruh, Hauser and Bruh, they're pitching tomorrow. <laughs> Hauser's four and five, four sixteen ERA. Bruh is four and seven, three eight two ERA. Um, so it's gonna be a good matchup. I don't, I never really know what to es expect when Hauser's pitching. Um, you know, he's been off and on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I get Hauser, Lauer. I don't really know what to expect. I'm hoping they do well. Um, because uh, we definitely, I would love to see this one streak keep rolling. And I mean, we have, uh, trying to pull up these real quick as I'm looking. Yeah, so he's four and five, four, 16 ERA, but over his last three games, um, so against Pittsburgh, last time he faced them, five and two, two thirds innings, only two earned runs. And then uh, Colorado, six innings, not uh, five earned runs. But it's in Colorado. I kind of look over that. And then last outing, he was five innings, uh, four in runs. So he's kind of averaged what five at six innings, given up around three or four earned runs. Um, but if we can get what he took, what he did against Pittsburgh last last time he faced him, five and two thirds, two earned runs, I'll take that any day. Yeah, absolutely. And that Colorado series, I mean, remember Woody gave up five runs early in that one yeah. too. Yeah. And that was, I think, a lot of pitchers trying to figure out, you know, how to how to get comfortable because that was the first series that there were checks, if I'm correct, right? Or was that the last one before? That was the last uh, one. I want yeah, to say that's the last, last one, one before. before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were trying to figure that, you know, navigate that when they were in Colorado. Um, yeah. And so, you know, even if all all it was was rosin and sunscreen, they still had to figure out how to do it without caking it up. Uh, and being mm -hmm. totally obvious with it. So uh, interesting to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, he's, he, I'm I'm not concerned with Adrian Hauser at all. I mean, as your fourth or fifth starter, him and Lauer, yeah. they're not, they're not going to be consistent every time out there. Mm. And like I said, last thing we're spoiled because we see uh, Prato, Woodruff and Burns and what they do and the yeah. drop off, the drop off between those three and the next two slash three. Um, it's pretty you know, significant. Yeah. but um, yeah. So then, looking at the next game, we have um, Lauer pitching, and I don't. When I looked earlier, it was TBD and still is TBD. But Lauer is two and th uh, two and three with the four uh, fifty ERA. Uh, looking at his last couple games, you know, five innings, four and in runs, kind of similar. Uh, Hauser, five uh, innings, four and in runs, five innings, three and in runs, and then last in Colorado, he was like the only pitcher to not give up you know, get blown up. So he only uh, gave up two hits in six innings. Um, but then again, whenever he faces the NL West, he turns into like the ace of all aces. So uh, he only he yeah. gave up an over and run. So it's, uh, it's kind of, again, it's, you don't ever, you never know what you're going to get. And 
and also like you said whatever you kind of get from him it's you just kind of it's just gonna have you know you're just gonna have to live with whatever you get so i i do like that they're doing a six-man rotation currently because yeah. i feel like it's gonna really like we saw today with burns if he's okay they're gonna they're gonna go through some stretches here and a uh, side note uh it's now seven two uh yep. man on second <laughs> man, on, man on third man oh, on third two uh, outs okay uh um, i'm behind a little bit so you yeah. you may be correct in your, your answer, yeah. yeah which you know good for you if you if you even call that um and then last game is peralta versus anderson so hopefully we can peralta like he's seven and two with the 217 era right now um, he's killing it crushing he, it yeah yeah he's he's been Fire he's just been say again Oh, I, 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 well, I was going to say fire Freddy, but we can't really call him that anymore because he's not just throwing heat. He's really he's expanded. Fire? Fire? Like fire? <laughs> fire? Yeah. Uh huh. Like hot. Okay. Oh, caliente. <laughs> caliente. As they, as yeah. they say in, in my mm -hmm. country. Yeah. The wind streak <laughs> is at nine. All right. Ooh. Awesome. Glad to see that. There you go. Hopefully, Seven to two, I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> You're off. I knew, run, so. I knew Alec Bettinger was giving up runs or a run. I yeah. Usually he's good for two. Tonight he surprised me and only gave up one. So we'll take it. You got. <laughs> you got to take what you get. Yeah. Yeah. So three more games against this team, uh, Pirates. They're they're not a good team, but they do have some really good players on this team. It's, I mean, I feel like their future eventually is going to get bright, but uh, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. So hopefully we can kind of take advantage of this team. I said. Um, in off season when I was looking um, at a, on a different podcast at, you know, um, this division, I said, whoever can beat up against the pirates and take advantage of this team mm -hmm. is probably going to win the division. Um, I didn't expect the Cardinals to be this bad and the Cubs to go on a losing streak, but, and they, both of those teams can still come back and win. But if we can take advantage of these, these teams that are just, they, they want to lose. If you look at their front office, like they don't want to win. They want picks. Um, so we got to take advantage of this, of this series and definitely try to stack wins because we do have a, a little bit of a rougher schedule coming up. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The, uh, elsewhere around the league looks like the Cy Young race might be opening up a little bit here. Uh, Jacob DeGrom gave up three earned runs in seven innings tonight <sighs> to bring wow. his ERA all the way up to 0.95. <laughs> God, he's so good. Still, but hey, we'll we'll take that. Is he is he human? <laughs> no, probably not. I don't. I don't. I can't believe it. And who was it? The, was it the Angels or um, the Braves? Braves or the Mets? Okay, Braves. Uh, yeah. He's on the uh, okay. Looks Anything like, else you guys want to talk about? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I think it was Austin Riley hit a two-run shot in the uh, first inning, and. Freddie Freeman has an RBI. Freddie Freeman, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, he's washed. Jacob Degrom <laughs> done. Heard it here first. <laughs> did, did we did we go over your All Star lineups? Todd? We did not. We skipped um, you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> let's let's I'm, no let's I'm end, let's right end on that other shit, man. No, let's end on that so we can do that real quick. So I want to hear what you guys yeah. know we can end this real quick. Uh, so they did announce the starting lineups for uh, the All-Star game today. Um, I'm just going to run through them by position for each league because that's how MLB has them laid out. Uh, first base, National League, Freddie Freeman, Vlad Guerrero Jr. going at first for the American League. Second base, National League, Adam Frazier. Uh, American League, Marcus Simeon. Shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr., big surprise. Mm -hmm. Xander Bogarts is going to be there uh, for the American really League. Good. I think that uh, going into the season, I don't think a lot of people would have had that. So uh, mm -hmm. good on him for, for getting in there and, and grabbing that one. National League third baseman, Nolan Arenado. American League third baseman, Rafael Devers. Uh, another guy that I don't know would have been picked to be starting at third base at the start of the season. Uh, National League catcher, Buster Posey. American oh. League catcher, Salvador Perez getting another tattoo on his arm. Uh, <laughs> so good for him making another all-star. Uh, DH, 
is Shohei Otani for the American League. Outfield, uh, American League, Mike Trout, Aaron Judge, and Teoscar Hernandez. National League, Ronald Acuna, Nick Castellanos, and Jesse Winker. So two Cincinnati Reds starting in the outfield uh, for the National League All-Star team. Wow. Do you think any of our players were snubbed? Uh, no. Neither. I think the, the best case for one is going to be uh, Omar Narvaez. And yeah. catcher's tough right now in the National League. I mean, he's having a great year, but, I mean, it's Buster Posey. What, yeah. do you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, Buster Posey, he took off last season, and he looks so refreshed. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like that added five years to his career. The Giants, <laughs> the Giants are good. Like they're, they're really good, and like yeah. I don't know, I didn't think it was sustainable, but they're still they have keep people on the on the injured list too, but it's somehow they still keep pitching. It um, it kind of reminds me of the I think it was the sixteen or was it the seventeen Brewers that they wanted to start the rebuild, uh, but the team took first place into like August and then ended up finishing like third and fell apart. Oh, so they couldn't yeah. make any that, deals. It would have been they 17. Could, I think. Yeah. They couldn't yeah. sell at the deadline. It was just like, what is this? Um, which I could see because it's tougher for them to sustain this all year, especially with a lot of games against the Padres and the Dodgers. Um, once you start going down these home stretches, it, it gets tough. So it'll be interesting to see if they can sustain. That'd be pretty incredible if they're the ones that, that come out in first place with that division. I'll say yeah. this. There's not one. There's two teams I don't want to ever see in the playoffs, the Giants and the Astros. Because I feel like those two teams, once they get in, I think they're so good. Like they're like the, the Giants, they just know how to win. And they still have the same core from their run. You yeah. know, Crawford, Posey, um, Belt. Brandon Belt. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like, you know, <laughs> It's one team I do not want to face in the playoffs, but which is crazy that they've kept mm-hmm. those three guys together this long. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that's kind of kind of pushed them back is that they they signed them all to these big contracts, and so the last two seasons, like nineteen and twenty, they weren't hitting; they weren't playing well at all. Yeah. So they were losing, and um, now they're they, those three guys are just crushing it. And then they have Evan Longoria; they've had him for a couple of seasons. Like he's, you know, they're all revitalized. I feel like it's. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you know what's in the water over there in San Francisco, but these guys are all looking looking amazing. But we'll see. We'll we face them soon, so we'll kind of see how that. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, up. it's gonna be a good series. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else either of you want to add before we hop off here? Oh, the White Sox game um, is prime time. The Sunday night game. Yep. Which huge got on in the July. Brewers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, July twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, it was originally what a day game and they, they moved it to know. a night game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's kind of like, you know, like a flex on, is it a flex? I don't know how they call it in baseball, but I, yeah, uh, they, they'll kind of do that throughout the year. Yeah. I do, I do appreciate the, uh, the difference between, you know, a Cubs or a, a Yankees game or something that we typically yes. see on yeah. prime time. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Let's let's go ahead and end on that. Um, as always, thanks for listening to the Walk and Off podcast uh, presented by our friends at Blue Wire Hustle. Please take a moment again to like, subscribe, and review. You can you know find us on anywhere you find your podcasts, as well as YouTube. Um, for uh, you can find us all on Twitter. You can follow our page. I think our Twitter handles are on our uh, video. If you're not seeing that, it's FD Castro twenty two, Wendy Lou who three, and then the Ton V as well as walking off no G. All right, with that being said, we'll see you guys later.